Hello and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will be examining two weather systems which affect the Caribbean region. These are anticyclones and the intertropical convergence zone, ITCZ. While anticyclones are high pressure systems which bring stable weather conditions, ITCZ is a low pressure system which brings unstable weather conditions. In a high pressure system, air is sinking. As the air sinks, it warms, reducing relative humidity and the chance of clouds forming. In the absence of clouds, or with very few clouds, conditions become sunny and fair. It is a good time to go to the beach or to go on a picnic. In a low pressure system, air is rising and cooling as it rises. When air cools sufficiently, condensation will occur, forming clouds, which can produce heavy rainfall. This will make it difficult to do outdoor activities, so we generally have to stay inside. Now let's first look at the ITCZ. The Intertropical Convergence Zone, or ITCZ, is a broad zone of low pressure and very unstable weather that encircles the Earth near the equator. It divides the global air circulation into two mirror images, one to the north and the other to the south. The ITCZ is formed as a result of the northeast and southeast trade winds converging near the equator. As the air converges near the surface, it has nowhere else to go but up. So convergence leads to air rising. The greater the angle of convergence, the greater is the amount of air rising. Now, as the air rises, it encounters thinner atmosphere, which causes it to expand and cool. The cooling air will eventually lead to condensation, which forms thick clouds. These clouds are responsible for producing thunderstorms. Note that this weather system is not cyclonic because it is formed close to the equator where the Coriolis force is generally absent. Now, after being formed, the ITCZ will migrate north and south of the equator lagging behind the overhead sun for about two months. The map shows that the ITCZ moves faster over land than over sea due to the fact that the surface of the land is generally warmer than the surface of the sea. Since there are more land masses in the northern hemisphere, than the southern hemisphere, the ITCZ will migrate further to the north than to the south. Now on a weather map, this is the symbol for the ITCZ. The one to the top shows a wide zone of convergence which means that there is a greater degree of instability. The lines in, in between 
tells us that there are two areas of showers. The one to the bottom indicates that there is a narrow zone of convergence and one area of shower activity. ITCZ mainly impacts the territories to the Southern Caribbean, including Guyana, Trinidad and Tobago, and Grenada. Uh, the ITCZ, when it moves north, will bring rainfall to Trinidad and Tobago. And when it moves south to its furthest limit south, it will be outside of the Caribbean entirely. This means that it will pass over Guyana twice, bringing two periods of very heavy rainfall. We therefore talk about double maximum. Now let's move on to anticyclones. Anticyclones are large areas of relatively high atmospheric pressure that brings with it stable weather conditions. The air which rises at the equator diverges in the upper atmosphere just below the tropopause because it is hindered from rising any further. As such, the air will diverge and start moving towards the North and the South Poles. As the air move, moves towards the poles, it will get colder and heavier. At about latitudes 30 degrees north and south of the equator, the air will sink largely because it's cold. The sinking air is typically dry and free of substantial moisture. This is because as the air sinks, it becomes compressed by the air above it and is gradually warmed. This causes the relative humidity to decrease and also reduces the potential for cloud formation. With few or no clouds in the sky, the weather will be bright and sunny, or we say that it is stable. The sinking air on nearing the surface will blow outward. And because the Coriolis force is present at this latitude, as the air blows outwards, it will be influenced by the Coriolis force, which will cause it to be deflected to the right in the northern hemisphere and therefore rotate in a clockwise direction. Many of the major deserts of the world are located uh, around 30 degrees latitude. So deserts like the Sahara Desert, deserts in the Middle East, Deserts in the United States and Australia are all generally located within this latitude. Now, it is important to note that when the ITCZ migrates, the entire pressure belt will also migrate. This means that the areas of high pressure that we are talking about also shifts north in July and south 
in January. During the Northern Hemisphere's winter, anticyclones form over North America, and these may extend over parts of the Northern Caribbean. Also, during the Northern Hemisphere's summer, there is usually a large anticyclone over the Mid-Atlantic. This usually extends over part of the Caribbean as well. This anticyclone is known as the Bermuda Azores High, which is a large persistent and semi-permanent atmospheric high pressure center that develops south of the Azores in the North Atlantic Ocean at the horse latitude. In the winter, that is in the Northern Hemisphere's winter, when anticyclones develop over North America and extend over the Caribbean, it is usually the time also where cold air masses are formed which gives rise to cold fronts in the Caribbean. The cold air mass behind a cold front that usually brings the stable weather condition after the front has passed is the anticyclone. So as a cold front passes, the air will become anticyclonic with clear skies and little or no rain. Now the dominant locations affected by the anticyclone are areas within the northern Caribbean. These include the Bahamas, the Turks and Caicos Islands, and the islands of the Greater Antilles. So we see a direct contrast there. The ITCZ affects the southern Caribbean the anticyclones affect the Northern Caribbean. Now, anticyclones can also have an impact on hurricanes during the summer months. Where hurricanes form, the trade winds steer the hurricane towards the west. The clockwise rotation of the air that is associated with the high pressure system often causes the hurricane to stray from their initial east to west movement and curve northward. Right. So thank you very much for watching. I encourage you to do your own reading, to do your own research, and to delve a little deeper into this topic. Don't forget to like, to share, and to subscribe.